Hi everybody, thank you for joining us on our webinar. This is the continuation of the webinar that we had in the summer and thank you for your feedback. Uh, based on your feedback we decided to have this webinar in a new platform in YouTube instead of Webex. So thank you for that feedback and we would also be interested to know uh, if you prefer this format or if you prefer Webex. During this webinar, I will talk about system identification using the system identification app, then the PID tuner app, then a bit of about gain scheduling for nonlinear systems and response optimization as well. So these will be the main topics. If you have a question, please ask those questions in the chat window and I will, like, uh, I will try to answer them. So just a few words about Gamex. So we are the lo local distributor for the networks. We provide the same services as the networks does in other countries. So we provide licensing, training and tech support services for Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Croatia and Slovenia as well. So let's dive into the topics mentioned. I did mention the data-driven method as well. So there are two ways how we can do that. We have apps in MATLAB. And we have this system identification app and we have this PID tuner app. I will start with the system identif identification example. So this tool is available even in really old versions of MATLAB. How can we use it? We can import some data. For now I will import just some, some built-in example. So we can import the data. Then we are working with this data. We can do some pre-processing, some filtering, removing that time and so on. So yeah, let's say I want to remove means. Then from now on, I want to work with this data. So I will drag and drop here. And then I continue to work with this data. I can plot just to get an idea about the measurement that I have. So this is the input and the output. This is the data that I want to use. And yeah. Then I can go to estimate and I can pick what kind of model do I want to have. Unfortunately, I don't know this model at all. So because I have no clue, I will go with the state space model. And I can specify here the order of the model. However, because I don't know the order of the model in this case, I can just select pick best value and I will say that yeah probably it is between level 1 and uh, order 1 and order 10. So let uh, order 1 order 10 estimate. And I get the response here it suggests that I should use order 4 for this specific example 
but I might want to choose five to get a higher fidelity model. However, I can overfit the data and get all, uh, errors on the validation data. So I will stick with four, insert, we get a 95% precision and here I have now the model I can plot this so this would be the step response and I can open up this into the LT viewer And here I can analyze it much more thoroughly if I want to find out more about <clears throat> the identified model. So if I'm done with this, then I can save the data. So to workspace and it has been exported with SS1 name. So now I have an SS1 object here somewhere. There it is, and I want to import this in Simulink. So I want to create a new Simulink model. Simulink model. And I want to create a control algorithm for this identified system. So I will go with one of the templates. We can have many templates here. We can have our own company template as well. But because I want to do a control algorithm, I will go with the feedback controller. I have a plant model, however, instead of this plant model, I want to use the identified model. So we can specify here a transfer function, but I want to specify my SS1 object. I will add just some, some scopes. And one at the input. Run the simulation. So yeah, not the best, probably. I need a better controller for this. Yeah, it's clearly unstable. So it's not just that I have bad parameters, but it's so bad that it's unstable. So I will open up the controller block. Inside of it, I have a PID controller block, and I will use the auto tune functionality. So I open it up and press tune. It will linearize our system. In this case, it's a linear system already, so there will be no difference between the model that is used in control design and the actual model that it's used in the simulation. However, in most cases, they are not the same because the Simulink model will be nonlinear. So here we can specify to tune the controller frequency domain 
and yeah how fast should be the response yeah I, okay with a bit slower response let's say and update block i don't have the other plot here because the other plot with the initial PID gains was unstable. Okay, I have the new parameters and I can run the simulation once again. And this is the response that we get. Okay, we maybe want to change it a bit more, but for now I'm satisfied with this result. So this is another way how we can create a model using the system identification tool and then integrating it in Simulink. So this was like the older user interface. If we are working with a more recent one, then we have some other options as well. Uh, hello, so about the question, you are absolutely right. You do need to have validation data as well. So if you want to use validation data, then, so I didn't show that in this example, you can pull that data to here and then uh, that validation data will be, uh, will be used. So you need to place the validation data uh, here. Thank you, thank you for the question. So I have some measurement data here. I'm interested how this looks like. So this is the input and this is the output and this is the time. I'm also interested in the sample time. So I will open up T and I can see that the sample time is 0.1. Okay. So I go to the MATLAB apps and I pick the PID to tuner app. In this case, I don't have a Simulink model. I want to create a model based on the measurement data, so identification. I go here to plant model, identify new plant get the input it will be a step response the output signal is this one so i will copy the name of the output signal the amplitude is one that's okay offset Sample time is 0.1. Import. Okay. So this does look like I have some delay here or that time. So I will select that. And I also have here an offset and I want to eliminate that. So I will go to pre-process and remove offset. And I want to remove the initial value. So initial value. Okay, much better. Apply, close. And now I can modify this interactively. Uh, 
or I can pick auto estimation. I want to show maybe just one example here from the control that you now might not be aware of. So in this example, we have a nonlinear model and we need to linearize it in many working points. So we do that. That's based on the script. You can do that interactively as well. I will not have time today to go into details. Now, this is what's happening. It's running a bunch of linearization at different working points. And then the huge advantage of this approach is that we can do gain scheduling for a PID controller. Well, how can we achieve that? So we can have a PID controller with gain scheduling. So based on the speed, each parameter can be set based on the lookup table. But how do we get here? So if you have a simple PID controller, if you change the source here to inter from internal to external, then you get such a PID controller and then you can do gain scheduling. So this will mean that you have an optimal PID controller even on a nonlinear system because it's optimized in several working points. And we can get some really nice response everywhere, no matter what speed, at what speed is it working. Okay. So that is pretty much about the control part. Here you can see the different response in the Bode diagram and the step response in different at different work points and here we can see the gain schedule for different parameters i fire up a different example so using parameter estimation now we have the dc motor model we are satisfied with the dc motor model this has the same architecture and has the newly tuned parameters. And now we want to design a controller for it. So let's see what are the results of the controller by just running the model. And yeah, they are not the best. So we are expecting something better. So how we can tune this? In this case, instead of a PID controller, we are using a transfer function here. And The work process is really similar to the parameter estimation. We need to specify the variables that we want to tune. So it will be the gain and the zeros of the system. And we also need to specify where the output should be. And we can do this interactively. 
So I can just come here and tune these separately until I get the signal that I want. What is the huge advantage of this approach compared to classical control design methods? This uses the nonlinear model. The results that we get are certainly uh, certainly will work with the nonlinear model as well. So I will start with the simple response. Let's see <clears throat> how does our system behave right now. This is the same plot that you saw on the scope. We have similar options here. We can set the optimization options. Here we have different methods. And then we can just press optimize. So the same way as earlier, this will run several simulations. So this will take a while. How can I speed up this process? As I mentioned, one way to speeding it up is parallel computing. The other method that we could use, there is something called fast restart. This time it's not enabled, but we could enable this. And if we enable this, then we can save the compiling time here. So if fast restart is enabled, what it will do, it changes only the parameters. However, it doesn't need to recompile the model. It can just run it with several different parameters. This could be a huge speed up. Uh, in the next example, we will see how it works. In some cases, it needs some kind of special setup. And this is the response that we get. As you can see, we are getting better and better performances and soon, we will get the results that we specified. Now, in this case, we have the same functionality here as well. So we have sensitivity analysis. If we are not sure which parameter of the controller is the most influential, we can run sensitivity analysis on that one as well and so on. So we are done with the tuning. We got the new parameters. We are satisfied with it and we can use them. However, in many cases, the, there is another issue and that is that no two motors or controller circuits or whatever are the same. Every component has some kind of tolerance. So we will have some uncertainty in our model. How can we tune the values with uncertainty? So I go here to uncertain variable set and now it's set to none. I will add some values based on the sensitivity analysis, if you remember, K was the most important component. So I will select K and I will set, specify that the nominal value is eight. However, it can change, let's say anywhere between four and 10. So this is quite a huge margin here. So four, 10, apply. Okay. So the same mechanism, it will run a bit slower because now instead of one simulation at each step, 
I will have three simulations at each step. It will run the nominal value and it will also run the minimum and maximum values for that certain parameter. We can specify many parameters here, so not just one. However, the more parameters we specify, the slower the optimization algorithm becomes. If we want to have a really robust controller that is able to work with big tolerance, even if the motor is slightly different or one window has higher friction than another one, this could be a really good method. And the nice thing about it, as I mentioned, is it works on nonlinear models as well. So this is the, the middle one is the nominal value, and then we have the minimum value and the maximum value. And now it's looking for a parameter, the controller that would satisfy the response no matter what, the, what motor is it in this case. So it is a higher torque motor or a, or a lower torque motor. Any questions meanwhile? Um, the question is the parameter tuning, is it a separate toolbox or is it part of um, or is it a function of another toolbox? Just a moment, I will run the licensing use command shortly. This does use control design toolbox, simulink control design, and some of the optimization methods need global optimization toolbox as well. So based on the toolbox list that we have, we will have more or less options here choosing the optimization method. So as you can see, we are getting results, quite good ones, even if the parameters are far off the nominal value. So it is possible to tune a controller in a way that it will work with a white uncertainty. So I will, write, I will wait for just another iteration and then I will stop the simulation not to waste too much time. Okay, close enough. So we are still not perfectly there, but we are getting really close, even with such a huge uncertainty. We can take a closer look so this would be the minimum maximum value and the nominal one for certain controller. Now going back to the question, the best way to find out the answer to such questions is to run the example. And then run the license in use. So this is the toolbox list that it's using. So we need MATLAB, we need the optimization toolbox. Okay, this specific example uses some Simscape. So obviously Simscape, Simulink, sure. Simulink control design. So not just optimization toolbox, but control design as well. And Simulink design optimization. This one, the Simulink control, the design optimization has the parameter tuning and uh, controller optimization and I did not use any optimization algorithms that need the global optimization toolbox in this case. Hello everybody, so this was the pre-recorded part of the seminar, if you still haven't
questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, we also will send the slides if you're interested. So please send us an email and also comment below if you're interested. And also please provide some feedback if you prefer this YouTube format or if you prefer the WebEx format so we can organize our next webinars in in that given format. If you have still some questions but you prefer to ask them in an email, we are waiting those emails as well. Thank you for your attention. As you can see, we also provide training services. So join us on our, in our trainings or contact us uh, at our webpage or via email for more information. Thank you very much.